Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by the XL Boat Company. Thank you, Zach, and welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, before I introduce today's very special West Tennessee guest, what is something you have discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? Uh, this week, I went into the Tennessee room and discovered the then and now section that we have that shows a bunch of different areas in downtown Union City. Shows pictures of like Westbrook Street, First Street, and several others from as early as the 1920s, as well as the same spot in 2015. So it's, it's kind of unique to see. Yeah, I know our very own Art Shivers is uh, instrumental right. in that. He spends about as much time in the library as I do. Um, he has also worked with Jennifer in archives and Katie down at Main Street to put some reproductions of those images inside the windows, which look really oh, cool. Yes. Um, that is an amazing, uh, an amazing thing Katie's been working on. So, uh, anyway, lots of cool stuff. Um, our guest today knows all about history and trying to get people to embrace their own, uh, downtown Ross Houghton is the marketing manager for visit Brownsville. Did I say your last name properly, Ross? It's okay. It's Houghton. Houghton. Awesome. Well, yes, I was kind of going yeah. one way or the other. That's um, okay. A little bit of a Dr. Seuss thing there. I didn't know, uh, did Houghton hear a who, but, um, <laughs> so, uh, fantastic. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Of course, <laughs> anybody who has listened to the podcast knows that I have roots in Haywood County and in, in Brownsville. Um, uh, both my parents, uh, grew up there. All four great grandparents grew up there. Um, all eight great 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 grand great great grand and then all 16 great great so anyway all the way back Deeply to 1832 rooted. so a lot of uh a lot of history and roots there in haywood county um but you didn't come there in 1832 uh you're not <laughs> old enough not. so <laughs> tell us not. what was your go you know, all the way back to the beginning and tell us you know what's been your path to end up where you are today all right so i'm actually from sofia bulgaria um, a little place in Europe. And with that, I was about two and a half years old and my family decided to come over and meet me for the first time. And in that time frame, it took about six to eight months for everything to go through. And I believe in 96 is when I came over to the U.S. And my parents are, my dad is actually from Ohio and my mother is from Memphis. And somehow they met in the middle here in old Brownsville, Tennessee. Uh, so this is where I grew up and this is where I call home. So have you been back to Bulgaria at all to check it I, out? I have not. After traveling the world, that was one of the things I was going to do. But then the pandemic hit and I was able not to uh, attend back. Now, um, did you grow up with your parents kind of telling you, you know, you were chosen, you know, that kind of <laughs> that kind of thing? Um, yes, in a way. Uh, my mother met a friend that also adopted prior, and she said, oh, your child's so beautiful. Where did you get them? And how did you go about the process? And they said, well, reach out to this organization. And she did. And in that time frame, they sent her a photo of me. And she said she knew immediately that she wanted me. Oh, it, did you have, uh, did she have other children as well? She did not. I'm the only child. Oh, very nice. So you got all yeah. the attention and all the love <laughs> and I did. what, what did your parents and or what do your parents did or do uh, for a living? So my father is a tool and die maker and he's also a locksmith. Um, but in the past year, my father has passed away last August, but then my mother, on the other hand, is an attorney. She has been doing it for 40 years and she loves what she's done. Um, and now in retirement, she actually works at the local radio station as the um, the host for it. So she loves what she's doing and she does journalism there as well. So yeah, she's, she's very, very well known, very well known in the Brownsville area. Let's right. sh shout out to her. Uh, <laughs> she's done a lot of great work for the people of Haywood County and Brownsville. So yes. tell everybody her full name. So her name is Perry Ann Houghton, and she did almost 30 years with the state. And she did private practice beforehand, but she loves it. She, her calling was always to help. And I think that was her way of giving back. 
Yeah, she's she's well known for her community service. So that's right. Shout that's out right. to her. Um, so back us up to uh, going to school. Where did you go to high school? So I went here in Haywood County, uh, the Haywood High School here and graduated back in uh, 13. With that, I am a little bit older. So when I first came to the States, I did not speak English. So I was actually not able to go forward with the rest of my age group. But in the process of that, it was good because I got to also meet very good people amongst the way. So it was good. Did you retain any of your Bulgarian um, at all? I did not. I did not. It was one of those things. It was hard for my parents to keep that um, there for me because, I mean, for one, they don't know the culture and they don't know how to speak the language either. So, but with that as well, I was able, I think back in 2012, 2013, the woman that actually brought me over, her name is Niviana. She is still over in Bulgaria now. And so I was able to, through social media, reach out to her and still have a good, just a great relationship today. So we talk on a regular basis and she really, she's wonderful. So Zach, actually, not a lot of people know this. He speaks Bulgarian. And so he's going to speak Bulgarian for the oh. rest of the podcast. That'll be kind of fun for both of them. <laughs> right, Zach? Uh, no you're, comment. You're supposed to say Zish. That's Zish. Yes, <laughs> Bulgarian. Um, so you grew up. Um, you, I happen to know that you're a good singer, um, mm -hmm. entertainer. So did you immediately start gravitating towards uh, that world? So it's strange. I, I can remember getting in the car with my mother and she would go to choir practice. And I don't know what it is about that, but just hearing her sing and just how much that passion was in her voice really kind of drew me towards it. Well, then I branched out a little bit more and I started doing music. I started doing musicals, uh, just kind of going with the flow of that. And with all that, she really was a big driver in that. And so was my dad, but it really just became natural. And then in the time frame of talking with Niviana from the other country, she stated that they being Bulgaria is a really big culture with music. So now I understand kind of where it stems from. And so um, I don't know that much about Haywood County High School when you were going there. Did they have um, a music program? And, and they did. They had, the, they, they had the choir and the show choir both. Yeah, they were very, uh, I guess, driven in a sense. They had a lot of theater there as well. Yeah. Were you Were you in that? Were you in? I Show was. Choir? I was. So it was like Glee. Yeah, I guess you could. Yeah, absolutely. We did surprisingly. We did a lot of their songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, seeing all of us sing and dance, it was good though. And then when it came time for you to decide what to do next after high school, what you know, what what factored into what direction you wanted to head. Oh, that was tough. Um, I never really saw myself as the go to college person. I love school, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I knew there were some academics that I wasn't strong in. And one of those was math. And I knew with certain elements of what I wanted to do, it was going to require math. And so I met a lady and she lives in Nashville and she does music. So I actually moved there to do music. And I actually got to do quite a bit, not as much as I would have liked to, but in that time frame, I was able to sing down on Broadway and, you know, sing at different various locations for hotels. Um, and what then was your, just, what's your style of, of uh, entertainment? I would say more or less. I like the whole pop country R and B soul. It's very broad. I guess I don't have one, but I really do enjoy, uh, that faster pace, more of a bigger, small build and big ending. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy. Do you play the bit. piano? I wish I played an instrument. I really do. I, I tried to pick up guitar during the pandemic and my, I'm very, um, let's, I don't know. I'm not very good at standing still for one minute. So, so uh, you, you sung um, at some point, I know you're going to end up touring with your music. Talk to us about, tell us that story. So I was living in Nashville at the time and a family member was in this program called Up With People. And I had no idea what it was. And then you search it and you're like, what am I looking at? And with that organization, it's a group of 
people from all over the world. I think in my cast, we had almost up to 20 different countries and over a hundred people. And with that, it was, it was just a culture shock to say the least, because you don't realize being from a small town that there's all these different people all around the globe. And what we do is we have a base in Colorado and we all go there for a month to a month and a half. And we are basically getting ready to go on road. We do most of our organization was built on music. So how did and, you get chosen to be able to go there? Oh, that was, um, that was tough. So you had to do an interview process with them. And then you also had to sing for them a little bit. And you also had to go through a lot of medical uh, procedures as well to make sure that you're ready to go on road. They had to make sure that you were healthy, that you had all your shots and that you were mentally and physically prepared. I mean, it was, it wasn't something that you just sign up and you're good to go. It was something they strategically had planned out and then they get back to you within two weeks to figure out, is this really what you want? I'm looking at the website. I mean, I, I didn't, you know, up with people was around a long, long time ago. 1965. So I didn't realize they were still doing what they do. And it's really impressive. Wow. The, the program that they have put together now. That's right. That's right. So you got selected and you yeah. uh, tell me again, where did you go to get ready? We went to Colorado. Colorado, which city? Denver, Colorado. Denver? Yes, sir. That was nice. Um, yeah, it so was got, really nice. Got to hang out in Denver for a while. And then yes. um, what happened next? So what happened next is um, we actually have family there. So it, I, so let me back up. We have a thing called host families. And usually that people come in, the program is able to set everybody with certain host families that are people that are take you in for the amount of time or short of time. And you're able to live with them, understand the culture, and you just kind of learn from each other. But with that, I stayed with family for the first year, and that was really nice. But at the same time, I'm glad I got to stay with family, but I was really jealous that other people got to stay with different specters of people. Uh -huh. uh, so that was really neat. Um, and also... Being on road, it was Monday to Monday. We would pack on Sunday, Monday would be on road, and then on the same day we would be there or Tuesday. So it was it was a long process. And you performed um, primarily in the states, or did you you travel other back countries and forth? as well? Yeah, we did some in the states, and we also did uh, more in other countries as well. What do you yeah. feel like that experience uh, contributed to the work that you're able to do today? I think with that is uh, the point of the organization is also to make young ambassadors of our community, whether that be the community, um, the state, the countries, wherever you're from. And it gives you that horizon of realizing that you are not alone in this world, that there's so many people that are just like you and I that are trying for that to make it better, trying to make it easier. What can I do to help you? It was a life journey of friends and learning the host families that become actual family. And I still have, I still keep in contact with my host families and my friends that I traveled with. So, so was, you, how, how long did you do this? I did this for about a year and a half. Oh, wow. Years. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. And you, you loved it. I loved it. It was definitely life changing because it, we all know we go through the stages of our lives where you hit 25 and then you realize, oh, man, like, what am I doing? Like, where, where, who am I and who am I going to be? And at the time that I traveled, I was 26, 27. And I was still trying to figure out who Ross is. Ross was still that person that didn't understand the world, but needed to at the same time. And it helped me grow. It had made me realize who I was and how far I wanted to go to help people. So that's why I think even what I do now with my job and helping my community bring people here and also helping my community in the process. So what were you doing when they snagged you up to come uh, work uh, for Brownsville? So I was actually working at the paper. I was doing their photography and I was just helping around um, the state's graphic, just doing whatever they needed me to do. And also I was on air. So I was helping once a week um, run the board, do interviews. And funny enough, my mother was actually there too. So we got to work together. 
Oh, that was nice. So, yeah, was nice. um, so you now are doing marketing for Brownsville. That's right. Um, we're going to take a really quick break, and when we get back, we're going to talk all about Brownsville and why somebody should even want to visit. The XL Boat Company is located in Mountain View, Arkansas, and here in Union City, Tennessee. They are an attractive, affordable, and tough line of boats that are the perfect choice for your outdoor adventures of all kinds. When choosing your next boat, visit xlboats.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our guest today is Ross Houghton from Haywood County, Tennessee, and we're going to talk all about what in the heck is there that it would make anybody want to come visit there. So, um, of course, I know because I've been there many, many times, but uh, Ross, for the uninitiated, for your up with people, Colorado friends who say, dude, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how cool Brownsville is. So Brownsville is a farming community as well. We're really big with our cotton and corn and all kinds of production here. And we like the fact that we are very diverse and we have that where everybody knows your name type of feel. I mean, you can't go to Walmart, you can't go to any type of local grocery store or anything without being in a 15, 20 minute conversation, which is great. But that's just the kind type of community that we are. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of home delivery. That is. That's right. And it's such a wonderful thing. And that's what I love about coming back home is feeling like that's how I knew it was home is when you could step outside and say hello to your neighbor and you know who they are or, you know, being around your family that you couldn't be if you're living far away. And with that, I grew up, you know, we have the minefield here, you know, and Mr. Billy Tripp is always, ah, I've known him since I was a little boy and seeing that sculpture come out to what it is now is just incredible yeah, so He's what are your what are your uh what are your memories of it when you were little and growing up um <laughs> so not knowing mr billy you know knowing of him as a child and then now knowing him as an adult you know you didn't under really understand his thinking process and now I've actually got to spend time with him and understand where he's coming from and it's a beautiful thing I mean art is you know Art is something that people always look at, you either you like it or you don't, but it's it's a uh, wonderful feature to have here in Brownsville because it brings people all over. Yeah, for, uh, for the uninitiated, um, <laughs> uh, the minefield is an incredible, gigantic sculpture. We actually had the, the young man who did the documentary about the minefield on as a oh. guest um, a, a few months ago, but um, the documentary is great if anybody's curious. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Tripp, uh, just started sculpting and just kept going and kept going both up and out. And it's a great big giant, um, um, art installation, um, yeah. that people from all over the world know about and come to see. I knew it was a deal when I was in Washington, DC and some art folks said, Oh, you're from West Tennessee. Have you ever heard of the minefield? And I was blown away. They had actually come all the way from Washington, D.C., just to check it out. So um, it's absolutely an amazing thing. Google it if anybody wants to. And you're a photographer. I'm guessing you've taken a lot of pictures there. Um, I have. Because it's, it's a great subject for photography. It is, especially when the sun starts setting. If you're at the top of where our courthouse is and you're looking down at it, it gives you that great skyline. And it now really there's the drone club or whatever it is. Yes. That, yes. Tell us can. about that. So Ken um, comes every year with his drone and it's, it's turned into this great event that he does. It gets bigger and bigger every year. And he actually had this year a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. It's basically like a one person, I don't know what you want to call it, um, like drone. He got in it and he flew around Brownsville and, he, and they were able to record him doing it. It was incredible. Um, yeah. So and there's people from all over and he does it every year. And I think it's actually on his birthday every year. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so um, that's cool. And then um, we're going to talk about some of the other things closer to the interstate in a minute. Yes. But I love the fact that uh, the folks in Brownsville had the foresight to take the old high school and, and make it into a museum. Mm -hmm. Share a little bit about that with us. So the museum over at College Hill 
has is just multiple different arts and through history of Brownsville. I mean, it's a great thing. It stands tall and I mean, you can't miss it. And it's also right beside the Anmarks Theater. So. Yeah, and it's a it's a beaut the theater's nice. The the uh high school, which is where my parents went, is big and it's a beautiful high school. And beautiful. then all of the homes all around it, you know, are in are historic really, history. really, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, great old houses, and you know, it's just a great, it's a really comfortable uh part of town. Um, I spent a lot of time over there uh when I was working on the book on Richard Halliburton. Oh yeah. Um uh, the, the, what's the name of the historian it escapes me. Um, I, I shouldn't even, the, he's, been a while. I, he's passed away. Um, mm -hmm. but he was really, um, I'm going to think of it in a minute and I'll interrupt myself and tell you, but, uh, he, he was so instrumental in preserving, um, in preserving, um, history, uh, for Haywood County. That Haywood he, County. Definitely, he definitely deserves, um, a shout out. Um, so if I was coming to Haywood County and I've only got one day, what else would you suggest that I do? I would also suggest going out to the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center out there. Uh, they have five museums in total. They have your Hatchie Museum. They have a cotton museum. They have a music uh, museum as well. And they also have a the Sleepy, Sleepy John Estes, which is a blind bluesman from Brownsville. And on top of that, it's the um, infamous... Tina Turner. We actually have her Flag Grove School there as well. Yeah, Sonia. Um, Sonia is a whirlwind. Um, yes, she has done um, a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, through the years. Talk a little bit about sort of her vision um, for the for the whole org the whole county and how mm -hmm. she's using tourism. But before you say that, let me say his name is Lynn Shaw. Lynn Shaw. Ben Shaw was an amazing guy who collected just thousands of articles of uh, O'Brien, I'm sorry, O'Brien County, Haywood County uh, memorabilia and things like that. So uh, yeah. definitely want to uh, shout out to him and his um, um, Beth Tripp, Trip. mm -hmm. who is following in, in his footsteps. Yeah. And she's the current Haywood County historian, and right. she is doing a great job. And she's married to Billy, who Billy is Trip. Minefield. Full yeah. circle. We went full circle there. Zach, have you been to Brownsville and hung out and taken your kids? I have not been to Brownsville yet, but I really want to see the minefield. What the Me heck? Too. You got to do that, man. You got to go. So you got to. Okay. So um, Ross is going to tell you exactly what to do. Zach okay. has seven kids. Nope. And, no. Sorry. I'm, he has two kids, a boy and a girl. <laughs> and so Zach's going to bring his two kids let's let's plan his itinerary for him we need to we need to okay so where does he st where first of all where does he stay is there any place in brownsville you can spend the night there is we actually do have a comfort inn is actually right beside the delta center so you have the opportunity when you're right there to come on over to the center say hello to sonia and devon and you can actually get a you can do your own you can do your own um walk through or you can actually have them guide you yeah aren't there with, aren't there isn't there someone in haywood county who has started um it's like i want to say urts but that's not the right word what's the right word oh you're talking about serendipity the yurts yurts is that the right word yes how do yes. you spell yurts i'm looking it up y u r t s okay so um that's in haywood county isn't it that is um, and they are, uh, I've not been there. Have you been there yet and seen them? I have. I actually okay. grew up out there. So the originally the serendipity was the Brownsville country club. And in that time frame, the country club sold and it actually turned into serendipity today, which actually has your tents. It has your yurts. It has log cabins. They have everything that you, you can actually park your RVs there. They have everything. Huh. Look at that. There's like water. They're right there on the water. Yeah, they have swimming pools, they have a lake, they have a, I think they call it like a, um, we're doing the kids like those jumpers where you can go into the water, that sort of thing. They call it glamping. Glamping, glamping. is what it is. Glamping at its best. And they have a bar and grill. I mean, okay. Okay, so um, we're going to make reservations, Zach. I've already got you booked. Um, so he's going to go there. He's actually going to stay for four days. Um, so um, 
what else is there to do in Brownsville? Uh, describe for him what it's like at the place Sonia's put together there at the visitor center. So it's beautiful. They keep it well maintained. And Sonia is on top of everything. Her goal has always been to bring tourism here. She wants to make sure that it's kept that way. And even with Flag Grove School, she has been well in charge of that and making sure that it's being revitalized and always going. Um, they actually make sure when you come, you get that full experience. Uh, she is a force to be reckoned with, that's for sure. Zach, did, did you and I not stop there one time? Maybe that was somebody else. You've never been to the visitor center there? I have not. So I've not been also, to Brownsville. Yeah, the Tina Turner Museum, you know, it is uh so so um as Ross mentioned, uh, Sonia managed to get the Flag Grove School there. The Tina Turner Museum is really impressive and they worked really closely with Tina Turner on it. Um so it absolutely it's on my bucket list as well. Yeah, yeah. You need to stop there um and do that. Um, and then I'll tell you something that I love in Brownsville, and I don't know if, if you can just go anytime, but um, the Taylor Campground um, oh, yeah. is, have yeah. you been there before, Ross? I have one time, but I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, they have a, uh, they have a uh, Taylor Campground where everybody who's a t part of the Taylor family has built little cabins and things all in the woods. Um, I was there for in an official capacity. I'm guessing they don't let people just wander around at all times, but um, that's really a cool thing too. And then for people who are involved in history, for me personally, um, I really love all the uh, history related things they do there in yeah. Brownsville. That's it's a community that's really uh, embraced its history. That's um, right. And, and, and then whenever you get hungry, you can also stop by Livingston Soda Fountain and Grill. Oh that yeah, let's talk about the downtown. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, tell, you're tell him, tell him all about the downtown area. So we've actually been working on the downtown area for a couple of years, and we're still going. But with that, the Livingston Soda Fountain and Grill, which is by Glenda uh, and Jack Pettigrew, and they have done a fantastic job. It's like stepping back in time, and you get great food, you get great milkshakes, um, they you get the full experience of feeling like you're set back in time. Uh, with that as well, we've also finally got a coffee shop, which they are great. It's actually, it's actually underneath the uh, state's graphics. So they have their time there and it's really good coffee. Uh, My uncle used to have a store there on the square called Hobart Lovelace and Sons. Um, I don't know if that was, that was probably before your time, but um, it, I would go there and hang out. Um, and it does, it's like, it's like the downtown Browns was a lot like Mayberry. Yes. Kind of got that vibe. My dad was actually a soda jerk working at the drugstore in the, um, it would have had to have been in the night, early 1950s. So right there during that era, um, yeah. really a cool downtown. Um, and then are there, is there shopping in Brownsville? There is. That's what I was to tell Zach. You can uh, take your wife down there and she, we have boutiques, we have the Fork of Deer, we have Kelbells. And then even if you're not feeling Livingston's, you also do have Milano's, which is a pizza joint. And they, I mean, the pizzas are incredible. They, they, I mean, they're, they're good and they will fill you up. I can assure you. I think it's funny. Something that you just said is a very Brownsville thing or a very West Tennessee thing. Um, the forked deer. Um, <laughs> it's really strange that it's spelled forked deer. You know, yeah. Everybody yeah. says forked deer. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why that is. I guess I have a lot of people saying you forked a deer and I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> nobody did that. Yeah. It's a very strange, um, it's a very strange, not, not that people don't during deer hunting season, um, yeah. which is, which is upon us. I mean, it'll be time for people to go out and hunt deer. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing about Haywood County that I think is cool is, uh, you know, like I've been there to speak about books and things and there's a good turn. There's a lot of lifelong learners. Like your mom is probably somebody who is a lifelong learner yeah. who loves programs and loves getting to know, you know, things. Um, last question we want to ask you about is, you know, you guys have had some business developments there in recent years with Blue Oval City. A lot of people listening don't have any idea what that is. Talk about Blue Oval City a little. So Blue Oval City is our EV, um, I guess, let me start. So Blue Oval is our EV um, station now, I guess, for Ford Blue Oval. And they're trying to create this whole conveyor there. I mean, it's massive. If you haven't drawn by, 
and seen it over on the Stanton side, it's incredible. It is one of those things that when you see the sheer size of it, it just takes you back. Um, we also are having our battery plant there as well. So they're able to kind of correlate with one another. But with that, we're hoping with Blue Oval, we are going to bring numerous jobs. We're going to bring new businesses here. We're hoping that all over that people would want to come here and live because that's our goal as Brownsville and as marketing and as Sonia and you know everybody that lives here. We want people to come and enjoy and see what we have. Well, and you're really, Sonia, especially where her location is, she's yes. really fortunate that she's right there on the highway between Memphis and Nashville. Um, mm -hmm. Exit 56 is where yeah. she is. The exit right before her is the um, solar plant um, yeah. and exhibit. And they have an amazing exhibit. Solar is that, farm, is yeah. that in Haywood County? The solar yeah, farm? It is. Okay. Yeah. So that's another great thing to do. Honestly, yeah. you could spend you know, 30, 45 minutes in there, just looking at all the things they have at the solar farm and the way they tell yeah. the story of the importance of alternative. Yeah, you wouldn't think with that type of the solar farm being that has a full exhibit till you walk in and you see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really, it's really impressive. And honestly, it's such a game changer. So kudos to the powers that be in Haywood County that had the foresight to build that location of course, I've been privileged to get to sit in some of the presentations and hear a lot about it. And it's absolutely not just going to change. It's not just changing uh, Brownsville and Haywood County and Stanton and all the towns there, but it's changing all the way up here in Obion County, an hour and a half away. You know, we we are seeing ripples, you know, of 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 your business, people that want to be close by. Not everybody needs to be right there and where you are people some people want to be an hour or so away to do their manufacturing and and so it's just really helpful for the entire uh state so it's really kudos to the to the planners who did that yeah i agree and hopefully now that we're officially out of the pandemic we have seen a huge increase of people traveling again so that's been a wonderful thing oh yeah sonia you know sonia was uh on a panel that i led not too long ago and she was sharing with us um just the sheer volume of people that come there to the visitor center. Of course, they want to use the restroom, you know, get something to eat or drink, shop a little and yeah. see some of the stuff she has. Um, but then, you know, they then want to know what, it, where else can we go? And so that's why it's yeah. so important for some of us to have relationships with, um, with Sonia um, and with her team there. Now, where do you actually work out of? So I, so since Sonia started Visit Brownsville, um, I don't have an official office, but with that, I'm at the Delta Center. So Sonia and I are, you know, room to room with each other. So we can just lean over and <laughs> say hello. And it's easy to not make that phone call or having to drive to her. I'm there and that way we can collaborate and we can get some things done. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Sonia's the best. I've been she working is. with her for years and, you know, for we, we, our, our father's, went to high school together and uh, we have the same second great grandfather. So we're sort of related distantly, but yeah. um, when I worked for Elvis Presley enterprises, Sonia and I worked together on the little Elvis display. They had the artifacts that they had on display and things like that. So that back yeah. room back there, is it still got uh, musicians? Yeah. Um, there was right. a Tina Turner thing, maybe and Elvis yeah. and Elvis Jerry Lee. got his jacket and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very cool stuff back there. And then also, Sonia also has an aquarium. Um, is, that, is that still That's there? in the hatchy room. That's right. So you can see the right. kind of um, the kind of fish and animals that are in the Hatchie River. So, right. um, Zach, your kids would eat it up. They would love that. You got to go do that. <laughs> We're going to make the trip. And there's... There's a bobcat in there too that's been stuffed, and a lot of a lot of people get kind of taken back by it when they walk through the door and see it. So, and there's a Zach, there's a forked deer in there. Um, <laughs> you'll have to check that out. Um, but anyway, Ross, this has been really fun getting to uh, talk to you and hear about some of the cool stuff um, that you're getting to do. Um, what What are you liking most about your about your job now? I think I love it most that I love what I do. I love the people that I work with and it makes my life and job so much easier. Sonia is so laid back that anything that we can go off of each other with, it works out. It always has. And I enjoy that. It's so funny. Zach says the exact same thing about me. <laughs> That's right. I do. 
Um, thank you for joining us, Ross. And thank I look for forward to me. seeing you next time I'm at the visitor center. I hope you guys come and see us and we'll be glad to take you around Brownsville. And I thank I'll you, let you know. for having me. And thanks to all you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.